Magandang umaga sa inyong ng taga Philippines. Greetings from the Philippines. Welcome everybody. It's a beautiful morning. Well, it's sort of pushing on to uh, noontime here, but I got the light behind me. That's how I can tell. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, structure in the GUI used in Proxmox as its interface. Hope everybody is doing well and has survived the Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year. Uh, I should say welcome to the Year of the Dragon, everyone, also. Last week, my relatives and I visited a live recording of a show here in the Philippines, a TV show called Eat Bulaga. I thought it was Eat Blind, but apparently Bulaga also means surprise, so it's Eat Surprise. It shows at noon. It's been around since 1979, so we got the chance to go on stage and be part of the audience. You can see a shot uh, there. It is right there, okay? But let's get back to the subject at hand before I start rambling aimlessly around. So let's get on with the video. So today we're going to talk about or take a look at Proxmox GUI and discuss the structure and usage. I don't want to get too deep into any one aspect as I'll be covering those in future videos around specific topics, but I want to give us all a general overview before, before jumping into a GUI discussion though we need to take a look at the levels present in Proxmox and how they relate to each other and how they end up relating to the GUI. And if you're wondering what I mean by levels, uh, just hang on, we'll, I'll explain it to you. I, but basically there's a couple of different levels. You've got the Proxmox data center, cluster level, whatever you want to call it. Then you've got the level that your actual computer sits at that you're using. And then you've got the level below that where your virtual machines sit at. So I just want to say this is something I totally missed when I first go around with Proxmox and probably explain some of the troubles and issues that I encountered. Not saying that Proxmox does not have its share of flaws, issues, and problems. It does. I'm just saying that some of my issues were self-induced by not really understanding the Proxmox layout or how the whole system worked. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on the Proxmox structure and what major elements of the GUI are. I'm going to try to avoid prolonged explanations into functionality, various options and choices that will be available depending on what you select. As I want to focus more on talking about the overall functionality of the Proxmox interface. So let's get going with the presentation, okay? I want to apologize for the darkness. I got a lot of light behind me, but I've got a good opportunity right now to do some recording, so I'm taking it. But onto the subject at hand. So there are basically three levels of control in Proxmox, or just three levels in Proxmox, however you want to call it. First level, or the highest level, is the data center. Uh, the data center provides cluster-wide management and a cluster is multiple computers hooked up as Proxmox uh, nodes. A node is your actual computer where you store your virtual machines and you can have multiple computers which is called a Proxmox cluster and it's in the data center and that's it's the system level so when you're looking at it, anything where the data center is selected you got to think cluster-wide management or system-wide management you need to think globally about these are what the options here are going to do. They're going to be global. Next level down is what's called the node. This is your actual computer that you're running the Proxmox server on. So any actions at this level affect individual computers only, but they affect the whole computer since it's the whole computer that's at this level. Things like hardware and storage and stuff are, well, you can look at the category titles and you can sort of figure out what they do based on the level and like I say the node level is strictly for computers. It's not data center wide, it's just on that computer. And the final level below the node is a virtual machine or container level and these you create on the individual computers and actions here are affected only in the individual machines. They're not affected system wide or even computer wide. It's just the individual machines. So. Understanding these three levels will help you understand what a lot of the commands you look at in the uh, interface are going to do and why they're there. So let's move on. So first thing you do, if this is the first time you open up Proxmox, you want to enter your IP address followed by the uh, 
8006 port. So your IP address colon 8006 in your browser and that should take you to the uh, Proxmox web login page. If this is your first time, you haven't created any users, you'll notice that root account is front and center and we're logging in as the root user. We'll talk about that a little more later when we talk about SSHing in. If this is the first time you've gone to this website, when you go there, you're going to get a couple of security warnings because Proxmox uses a self-signed certificate initially. You can just click through those. And once you log in, you get the uh, no valid subscription warning. Well, at least I do because I don't have a valid subscription. You may have one or you may not. But if you don't, you're going to get this warning. Just click through it. And then you'll actually, at this point, be within the Proxmox interface. So looking at the Proxmox interface here, there are basically four main sections. There's the header up at the top. There's the resource panel off to the left. There's the uh, tasks or log panel at the bottom. And then to the right of the uh, resource tree panel, there is the content panel. You're going to select something in the resource tree. Your available elements are going to be shown on the left-hand side of the content panel and then information and other things you can do are available within the content panel. Note that along the top of the content panel you can also find some buttons. At this base level there's just a help button but be aware other buttons can appear there as well as entering information directly in the content panel. It'll just depend on what you're doing. So the header panel is at the top and on the left hand side of the header panel you have the Proxmox logo followed by your virtual environment and your version number and a search box. You'll often hear Proxmox referred to as PVE, which is Proxmox Virtual Environment. The search box here will allow you to find objects within Proxmox, and that's basically all you can find through the search box. When you start getting a lot of uh, clusters and a lot of virtual machines and containers, it can scroll off the uh, screen in the uh, resource tree, and it's quicker sometimes just to type what you're looking for in the search box, but it's strictly for objects within Proxmox. Over on the right side of the header, you're going to find uh, four buttons. One is documentation, which takes you to the official Proxmox documentation page. Then you're going to have a button to create a VM and a button to create a container. And then you're going to have your root menu item at the very end. These buttons are basically always there regardless of what you're doing. So. We'll take a quick look at the uh, root menu or the user. I like to call it the user menu item here. So if we uh, click the down arrow and open up the user menu, we can see my settings, which allows you to adjust some of the screen settings and other things in Proxmox. Password, where you can ch the current user can change his password. TFA is two-factor authentication. That'll actually take you to the menu item in the resource tree and the uh, content panel to edit that. You can change your color theme, you can pick a language, and you can log out. And that's what's available under the root menu or the user menu. Let's just call it the user menu. I really don't like using root as the main login, but that's my, my personal opinion. So yours may be different. In the resource panel, you can select your view. There's a if you go to the drop down there, there's a server view, a folder view, and a pool view. Right now, there's not much in the folder view or the pool views because we haven't created anything to be in them, so we're not going to look at them. We'll stick with the server view from now on. But once you start creating containers, VMs, and other things, you'll be wanting to use probably the pool view or the folder view. But again, it'll depend on your workflow in Proxmox. But as I said, right now, when we're just starting out, there's hardly anything in them. If we look in the resource tree, we can see the first two levels, which is the data center and then the node level. You'll notice I've got two nodes, so this is a cluster. And in fact, uh, if you look in the uh, health status there on the uh, right, it says cluster and it's got a name. And uh, one thing about clusters is if a machine in a cluster goes offline, then there's a vote. And if you get a majority, the cluster stays online. Unfortunately, I've only got two machines in this cluster, so if one of them goes down, they're both going down. The cluster's going to die. I could 
get a Raspberry Pi and create a machine just to have another vote, but this is generally only concerning if there's a failure. Since I'm only running two machines, it's not work critical. I'm not overly worried about it. You can expand the nodes down below the data center and there's not much there right now. There's a network for that computer and then this, how the storage is laid out for that computer. And we'll be getting into those in a lot more detail later. But that would be the third level under the node where your virtual machines and your containers would sit along with other items, like I say, like the network and the storage. And this is the content window. And the menu list or tree that's displayed on the left will depend on what you have clicked over in the uh, right in the uh, resource tree, it will change. There's a lot of uh, items in this menu. Uh, most of them, well, some of them are self-explanatory, so I need a little more explanation. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I think I'm going to have to discuss a few of the ones that require additional explanation real quickly before go moving on. Okay, some of the acronyms. So CEPH, I think that's CEF, is a uh, distributed storage system. Uh, HA is high availability. It's another subsystem. SDN is software defined network. And a ACME or ACME is deals with certificates. Most of the rest of the stuff in the menu should be self-explanatory, but those acronyms need a little explanation. At the bottom of the screen is the, the log panel. Uh, as your tasks are cluster log. These things are only displayed temporarily in this particular area. They will scroll off the bottom eventually. You can go to the actual logs and the stuff will be there, but it'll scroll off this particular visual interface fairly quickly as you start doing lots of things and it starts filling up. And I think that's about the totality of the interface. So out of the box, Proxmox comes with the SSH server set up. So enter your IP address and port 22. And you're going to have to accept the uh, certificate. I'm using PuTTY here. And that's awful small lettering. Let me jump back and fix that. So let's go ahead and re-enter our port number. Let's go to appearance and let's change the font to something a little larger. All right, that should help. Yes, definitely better. Okay, we accept our certificate. You only have to do this once. And then we get to log in and this is SSH server, but we're still logging in as root. Again, this is an issue I have with Proxmox is you should not be logging in via SSH's root. But, like I say, my opinion, neither here nor there. So, make of it what you will. Okay, at this point in time, we should now have a good idea what the major areas of the Proxmox interface are, are and what they're used for and where we can look for various commands. We should also have some idea of the various levels we're going to be operating at using the Proxmox interface. Like I say, you do something at the data center level, it affects everything. At the node level, it affects just the computer. At the virtual machine or container level, it affects just that container or virtual machine. I was planning on doing a next video on users and permissions where we get to use some of those menu items and explain what they are, but I think I'm going to put that off a little bit. What I want to do is a video on, let me call it why Proxmox, but you could, might as well call it why web admin, why cockpit, why a GUI. And the reason I say that is I can do a lot of things, well, I can do pretty much everything in the GUI I can do through SSH and a terminal. I can achieve the same objectives from the command line, and I generally have a lot more control doing it through the command line than I have through a GUI. So I ask again, why use Proxmox or any other GUI front end? But I predict as I look into this, it'll come down to ease of use for some things. Not everything, because there are things I can do easily, much more easily through the 
command line than I can do through the GUI, but yeah, I think it's probably gonna come down to familiarity or ease of use, but I really wanna look into it and think about it. And I'll do a short video between this and the one on users and permissions, which will be coming, so. We'll see you next time, okay? Thank you.